one thing I definitely want to talk about, and like the tweets came in instantly. Google demoed a new magic editor function for Google Photos, AI based, generative AI based, where they were like, you know, you can just edit a photo. And they, the demo was it was a child holding balloons on a park bench, and they just circled the child and they scooted him over on the bench. <laughs> and then the generative AI just figured it. And like, uh, my Twitter is pretty quiet. I haven't tweeted in a long time, but you know, during events, I keep it open just to see. And the immediate, instant, what is a photo replies? <laughs> like, yep. this, I, I think I put it in live blog. This is a singularity level event for what is a photo. <laughs> like, it is right there with produce an image of my child as a text prompt, right? We're, we're looking at a photo and we don't like its composition. We don't like the way the sky looks. We don't like this. And with a tap, with a circle, we can just instantly change it. Yes, there's a, some Photoshop conversation there, but this is different, like meaningfully different than that stuff. Yeah, I, the, the demo that really got me is there's there's this picture of a, of a woman standing in front of a waterfall and doing the thing where you sort of stick your hand out as if you're like, you know, catching the waterfall or like the thing they do where you're holding up the Leaning Tower of Pisa or whatever. Uh, and she got the angle slightly wrong, but with Magic Editor, you literally just drag her over to the side of the photo so that she gets the <laughs> angle right. Uh, and it's it's literally, it's just that simple. They just like tap on the thing and just slide the woman over in the photo uh, and then put it back and it looks just as normal. And you can change yeah. the sky, you can change the background. It, it's the kind of thing that it's like, this is like the natural uh, finish of Instagram filters. <laughs> if you just like take Instagram filters and play it all the way out to the end, you have this where you can just change every part of your photo however you feel like. And uh, this is another one of those, like on the one hand, like as a person who tends to take just slightly wrong photos all the time, this kicks ass. I'm going to use this all the time. And it's yeah. coming to Google Photos, so it's not just pixel specific. It's it's This is going to be applicable to like many photos that I take from now on. Uh, and yet I'm going to look at every one of these and be like, am I lying to the universe about this photo right. that I took? No, it's like Photoshop <laughs> exists, right? And like, if you just think about Instagram is a really good example here. Because yeah. if you think about the Instagram norms that have changed over time, do you remember when using DSLR photos on Instagram was like kind of a faux pas? Yeah. Like that was a, a norm on that platform that you were only supposed to use your phone camera. It was like weird. And that's gone, like obliterated by the Kardashian machine. <laughs> like DSLR photos on Instagram are there all the time. Mirrorless photos on Instagram are there all the time. Yep. And then it was, you shouldn't Photoshop so much Instagram. Like they have the filters, but like a straight Photoshopped, it still needs to be a little bit raw. And that is yeah. fully obliterated too. And now it's like, oh, now everybody has this like completely like hot shit version of Photoshop that's AI powered that requires no technical skill. And you're like, the example they showed was, I think it was a gray sky. And they're like, do you want the sky to be as blue as you remember it? Which is an incredibly <laughs> philosophically loaded question. Yeah. Yeah. How blue do you remember the sky being on this day? Like, I, I don't remember how blue the sky was in the day I proposed to my wife. But if you ask me, it was the bluest it has ever been in world history. <laughs> Should it be that blue? Like, I don't know. And so, like, you just get to this place where it's like, you really could be, like, as an influencer, like, you know, where's that place in Italy with, the, like, the everyone stands on, like, the, the hand and the cliff? Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, mm -hmm. You could just be like, yeah. put, make a photo of me standing on this thing. <laughs> like, whatever. Yeah. Like, does it matter if I was actually there to take this photo, if I'm going to have the I AI mean, totally correct it? It does, because you're still a liar. Like, when you lie and do a Photoshop, <laughs> you're still, like... <laughs> A liar. But I'm saying the norms on Instagram. Right. And then yeah, but right. And then they had another AI thing where like Bard was generating captions of cute puppies. And you could just see yeah. this thing being like, all right, oh, I'm yeah. gonna like AI generate the photo, and then AI generate the caption. And like that's actually what BuzzFeed is pivoting to. Yeah, I'm just gonna like automate an Instagram account. I'm telling you, singularity event for what is a photo. A hundred percent. I, I wanna be more angsty about it but i just can't because i keep thinking about every time every time we've seen these turns on instagram at some point everybody's like hey you know this is all just lies right and then there's like a whole thing like jezebel and all these other sites are like these are full of lies this is destructive to to, to body images and stuff like that and i'm not saying instagram is more important than it is i'm saying it's a useful thing to examine how like norms in a photography community change over time so you start with you shouldn't even use a mirrorless camera on this platform. 
Like that was a thing. Like, and then now everybody's using DSLR, and you're like all the way up to Photoshop is fine. You're all the way up to like there's a lot of professional photography on Instagram, and now you're all the way up to, uh, yep, maybe there'll be some blogs talking about lies, but everyone's just going to use it and it's going to be fine. And like, th there's yeah. just something about the norms of photography in there that is interesting to pull out of Instagram. But it, I think it's like broadly true of all the platforms. It's not going to be a huge leap until you push the shutter button and the cameras start doing this stuff preemptively for you. It is already right. happening, right? That is already happening with Samsung and the moon. Yeah. And like, hey, we see that you're trying to take a picture of the Eiffel Tower with, you know, your partner in it. We're just going to, when you hit the shutter button, we're just going to get to to what you think you wanted. It's like, it's, it's just like obviously the next thing that's going to happen. Yeah. I have deeply mixed feelings about this, but yeah, it was wild to watch the, the demo where they, they, they scooted the kid over on the bench. The utility of that is a thousand percent obvious. <laughs> oh right? yeah. I wish my kid was in the center of this photo. The magic eraser where they're constantly circling people and deleting them from photos. Like, <laughs> bye-bye. Like, look, a generation from now, some Gen Z boss is going to, like, fire someone by deleting them from a Zoom call. <laughs> like, that's absolutely going to happen. <laughs> Just circling them on the call. <laughs> like, like, Tony, it's been good. Just circle that. You're out. <laughs> See you later. This is uh, Steve Jobs let Tony Fidel know that he was going to get fired by deleting him from the contacts in the first iPhone demo. This is a real thing that happened. Um, but like, Oof. that's all just wild. And like, we're just about, we're very close to accepting Magic Eraser as being a normal thing that happens in photos. Take this person on the background. Take yeah. this distraction on the background. Is like this close to being normal? The phone's going to yep. do it for you before you decide to do it. Very close to being normal. What is a photo? Singularity yeah. event. <laughs> <laughs>